Uh, we're rolling, so it's rolling. <laughs> so you can say whatever you want, but it's rolling. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I know where I would like to be right now. <laughs> but with, uh, I'd like to kick off this community public information meeting on the uh, Three Lakes Collaborative Sewer Initiative. My name is John Icoangelo from Beckett Narrator. Uh, the Alliance for Economic Success out of Manistee asked me to help facilitate the meetings. Uh, the key actors tonight are the gentleman over here, uh, Gary Lewis from Public Works from the Little River Band, and Brian Sousa from Wade Trim will be the two gentlemen that will be making presentations uh, on the uh, project. And then later on in the, uh, the session, Eric Williams who is the attorney that is establishing and working to establish the authority, will be online uh, via iPhone to answer questions, which we did this morning and it worked out rather well for everybody. The kind of the history or evolution of this project, to give you some background, is that Omecama Township, about two years ago, um, wanted to consider putting sewers around Portage Lake and they went to the village of Onekama who does have a sewer system to see if they could connect. And what they found out going through that assessment was that the village did not have capacity in their sewer system to take on the, the capacity that would be generated by the township. So as a result, Onekama Township reached out to the Little River Band who has a sewage facility uh, in Manistee Township to see if there was an opportunity to connect with their system and the Little River Band was open to that, that idea. And then as the project uh, evolved, then other communities were asked if they wanted to participate. And that's where we get the three lakes, Portage Lake, Arcadia Lake, and Bear Lake, and the five communities. So we have Onekama Township, Arcadia Township, Bear Lake Township, the village of Bear Lake, and Pleasanton Township are the five units of government that would be part of, if this proceeds, be part of the Three Lakes Sewer Authority. So that's kind of the history of where this has gone over the last two years, 18 months. These projects do take a while from beginning to end. And a lot of it has to do with collaboration, communication, transparency, and engaging the community on these type of projects. Uh, some of the reasons why the communities are interested in this is because of water quality. Um, about two years ago, I was involved with the Lakes to Land Regional Initiative. And that was approximately 18 municipalities, of which eight of those municipalities, Bear Lake Township being one, the Village of Bear Lake, Arcadia, for example, Pleasanton Township, Joyfield, uh, Gilmore, Blaine, uh, Crystal Lake, all prepared at the same time their community master plans. And in each community, we always had a gathering like this where people would get around tables, and we had one of the meetings here, and people got gathered around the tables, and we talked about shared priorities. And what came out of every single community that we did the master plan in, within the top five priorities people identified as one of their top five, protection and preservation of water quality. Okay? And that's been important, and that's been consistent in, in all of the communities. At the same time that that process was going on, Portage Lake about two years ago, three years ago maybe, created what they refer to as the Portage Lake Forever Watershed Plan. Uh, and that has been approved by the Department of Environmental Quality and EPA as a bona fide watershed plan and action program. In there, they identified the need to protect the water quality of the lake 
and the possibility at some point in time they may need to put in sewers in order to uh, protect the water quality in the future. Bear Lake went through a watershed plan about maybe 18 months ago with their group of folks that included both uh, Bear Lake Township, Pleasanton Township as part of the watershed, and those same conditions or ideas came up. And a year ago, Arcadia and Pierport, they did a watershed plan, which is under review now by DEQ, and water quality and the idea of the possibility of eventually putting in sewers uh, was also incorporated into their watershed plan. So there has been a consistent theme in this part of the state and with all the communities in terms of protecting water quality. Why? It's not only important for our quality of life here, but it's very important for the economy because a lot of us or a lot of you are, are year-round residents, but you know in the summer you have a lot of seasonal residents that come to the area and a lot of tourism. So not only is it important for the people's health that live here, it's also important for the economy that everybody depends on. So what we're going to do this evening is Gary and Brian are going to make some presentations to ex explain the scope of the project. We're going to get Eric Williams online via phone conference to answer questions regarding the, the uh, he'll go through the kind of the organization and the framework of what is involved in the sewer authority. And then like we did this morning, we'll open it up for questions because we got some really good questions this morning from residents regarding how is it going to work, how are we going to pay for it, who's going to be responsible. Okay, so that, that worked out. Uh, we had some really great questions that came out of the session this morning. I want to say, as you know, this is all being uh, filmed, that these sessions will, all three, this morning sessions at 10 o'clock, this evening session, and we're having one tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at the Pleasant Valley Community Center in Arcadia. All three of these will be hosted on manistee.tv.org and also on Manistee TV on their YouTube site. Okay, so if any of your neighbors didn't get an opportunity to come to the meetings, you can tell them to look on YouTube or go to manistee.tv.org, one word, manistee.tv.org, and they can, they can review any one of the three meetings uh, that they may be interested in. Are there any elected officials here this evening? Raise your hand. Now, could you please introduce yourself and what community you're elected to? Start right here. Cindy McPherson, uh, Village of Bear Lake, Clark. Mm -hmm. Greg McPherson, trustee, Village of Bear Lake. Okay. Julie Griffiths, Bear Lake Township Treasurer. Jeanette May, Bear Lake Township Trustee. Carol Merrill, Pleasanton Township Supervisor. Linda Schweier, Pleasanton Township Trustee. Now I'm going to ask a question. We should have did this this morning because some of you were here. <coughs> How many are from Arcadia Township? Raise your hand. How many tonight are from Arcadia? How many are from Bear Lake Township? Okay. How many are from the Village of Bear Lake? Okay. How many from Pleasanton? Okay. And how many from Onekama? Okay, just wanted to get a read on where everybody is coming from relative to the various uh, maps and projects. So with that, going through all of the, the background and why we're here, I want to introduce uh, uh, Gary uh, Lewis, who is the Public Works Supervisor for the Little River Band, and he has a PowerPoint show to explain the services that they provide. Gary? Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for coming out. So just to give you a little brief background on the Tribes Utility Department, um, you can take a look up here. So we have a water tower up here. Um, the picture in the middle on the center there is the lagoon, which we've been talking about here tonight. And that's being built. And then there's a well house. And then the two bottom pictures are for, there's a existing plant that was there for years. Um, it's a sequencing batch reactor. Um, for the staff, we have five staff members there. We have uh, 23 licenses, and there's 35 years of governmental experience in the tribe. And just a little 
fact there that I threw in. We also have 38 years combined military service there. Um, so the sequencing batch reactor, we can process 180,000 gallons of sewage a day. Um, we have a septage receiving station that's uh, MDEQ authorized and approved, and that's on their website. Um, we are, our lab is also certified by Region 5 for total coliform, E. coli, and that's for the water distribution system itself. Um, annually, we get inspected by um, sanitation engineers from the Indian Health Service, and they're a department of the Health and Human Services. Um, our staff is on call, and we rotate that weekly, and they're on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have uh, backup generators on all our critical infrastructure, and uh, the available capacity to treat is 247,000 gallons, and that's between the two different systems combined. And so here's the aerated lagoon that we're talking about here tonight that the townships would connect to. There's two, eight, two aerated cells, and there's 200,000 gallons a day capacity there. And we're working on an irrigation system and a few other things. And kind of along that lines, we've contracted with an engineering services company to assess our systems and make any recommendations with the cost that we would need to upgrade in order to have all the townships connect as well as some of the proposed expansion that the tribe is doing. Um, some of our services to date, <coughs> so water distribution, sewer collection, and treatment, um, there's the tribal housing area, the Little River Casino Resort, the convenience store, community center, government complex, and justice center for water and sewer. And then just water service is the justice center and the um, casino warehouse. Uh, sewer collection and treatment, so since May of 2016, we've had the township in Manistee there, the Northwest Michigan Health Center, the West Shore Hospital, the county sheriff slash jail and the medical care facility have been on our system. And then on September 23rd, Townline Unlimited tied into our system as well. Um, memberships that we have, so we're part of the Native American Water Association. Um, American Water Works Association, which by virtue of that, you're part of the Michigan Association. And then there's the Michigan Rural Water and Michigan Water Environment Association. And we also members with MISDIG too, and we mark and locate all those. And so just to close this up, so kind of one of the tribe's mottos is we work for the seventh generation, so where do we want to leave, what, what do we leave behind, where do we want to leave them seven generations from now? And so kind of along, keeping along that line is one of our goals is to assist in helping maintain the watershed areas. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Now Brian's going to power up his PowerPoint presentation and go over the, the process that we're going to, we're here this evening relative to the, the initial steps all the way through how this would all be sequenced through construction. So, Brian? Alrighty. Uh, good evening. My name is Brian Suza. I'm from White Trim. And tonight I get the honor to talk to you about sewage. Pumping sewage, collecting sewage, treating sewage, disposing of it, um, and some of the caveats that we see in dealing with all of that. Um, as Gary talked about the wastewater treatment facility that the tribe has and that we would be connecting to, I'm really going to be talking about the collection areas, who's included in that, and how do we get all of that down to the tribe. So once we get it to the tribe, then they take it over and they treat it. So as I go through this presentation, I know there's a lot of questions that want to be answered. Um, we will have time at the end of this to take a, a multitude of questions until everybody is satisfied and done. But I'm going to use kind of four basic questions to get us through this presentation today. And hopefully by the time I'm done, we've answered these. What is the project? What areas does it propose to serve? What are the anticipated costs? And how will the system be paid for? And again, I'll be going through each one of these individually. What is the project? Sewer collection around Bear Lake, around Portage Lake, and around most of Arcadia Lake. All right, that's where we are going to collect the sewage, and then we have to transport it south to the tribe. Okay, now I've got a map, um, a drawing, 
um, here. This is the same one, the small one you see on the screen. But what I wanted to do here is just kind of show, you know, the, the depth or the breadth of the area that we're looking at. We've got Arcadia on the top, Bear Lake right here, Portage Lake on the south, and then the tribe all the way here on the bottom. Okay, so essentially collecting sewage in Arcadia Lake, pumping it along M22 down towards where Potter Road comes into M22. That's where the Bear Lake system, where we collect that sewage, we would then pump that west to combine both the Bear Lake sewage and Arcadia Lake sewage together. Pump that then down to Portage Lake, around Portage Lake, collecting with Onekama Township and then onto the tribe. So, but these are the only collection areas that we have, here, here, and here. We are not proposing at this point or at this time collection areas along the route. We can take sewage from those areas, but it's not part of the sewer district at this point. So I say that to, to mention this, just because you are in either Arcadia Township, Pleasanton, Bear Lake, the village, or Onekama Township, doesn't mean that you're part of the sewer project. You will need to be in those sewer districts. They're kind of rudimentary shown there. We've got a better picture on the right of each of those watersheds. Okay, and what we're showing with these is those great areas, those shaded areas, are what we tentatively have marked for those sewer districts. The lines are parcel lines that we got from the county GIS. Um, so I wanted to have these so that, you know, after the meeting, you come up and say, hey, does it look like I'm in the sewer district or not? One thing you need to know about these, though, is they're tentative. We will have to continue to work with each township in order to define what exactly those areas are going to be. And obviously we want to surf around those lakes, but you know, things like do we take all of this property, do we add a couple in here, is this one out, you know, that there'll be some minor adjustments to this as we go down the road. But please understand that those are those are you know essentially what we're gonna be serving with sewer. <coughs> um, and I mentioned uh, I've said this before, but the five municipalities, Arcadia Township, Bear Lake Township, the Village of Bear Lake. Portage, uh, Onekama Township, and Pleasanton. Okay, well what would you, what would this system look like? I mean we collect it around the lake and then we pump it on down to the tribe. Well essentially this is how the system works. Um, you've got your, your house here, okay, and the sewage line that comes out of your house. Right now you flush the toilet, it comes out of the line, it goes to your septic tank, and then goes to your drain field. All right, what this would do is instead of going to a septic tank, it would go into a, a tank that hold, harbors the pumps or pump chamber or um, pump chamber is what we call it. And then we would pump it out to the sewer that's in the road. Okay, so somewhat everything basically from here into your home is the same. It's from here on that would be different than what you have. Uh, one thing I wanted to note on this, this uh, slide is you'll see this dashed line here. And I've got customer ownership. What, you, what I want to note with that is that line can move, okay? So what we mean by customer ownership is, would you own the pump? Would you own the, the, the valves? Would you own the pressure sewer? Depending on where this line falls in that project, that's what would determine what you own, okay? So typically in a system of this nature, this line would fall here. You own everything up to where you go into the pump chamber. And then from then on, is all part of this project. Paid for to be put in by this project, maintained by this project, um, repaired, replaced, if things go bad, by this project. So, you know, in some instances, you'll see projects where that line is out here, and when you connect, they say, okay, you've got to spend $15,000 on a pump and pump chamber, you've got to get a contractor on board, you've got to have certain valves, we have to have the controls, we have to be able to blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the, it can go both ways, but the way this project is set up right now is all of that would be paid for and installed by the project. Okay, so all the numbers that we'll talk about in a minute, the costs, that's all wrapped into it. This is what you would typically see on the surface when everything's done and of course the grass is all grown back. Um, this, is the, this is the lid for that pump chamber. Okay, so that harbors the pumps, it harbors some controls, and then it pumps it out to the sewer <coughs> to the road right away. A lot of times you'll see, we have electrical controls that go along with this. Sometimes you'll see them mounted on the side of the house. Sometimes you'll see them on a separate pedestal. 
you know, with a, with a, uh, a disconnect and electrical box. But that's essentially what you'll see. This one is probably under home ownership because we don't see an electrical box. It's probably all inside the house. Okay, we talked about collection, what that might show for your site. We talked about the areas, we talked about where we're taking it. How much does all of this cost? Okay, we've got three distinct areas um, that we take a look at or that we price out. Oneka, the first one here is Onekama Township, that collection system and then pumping that to the tribe, $13 million. Uh, Bear Lake Township, the village of Bear Lake and Pleasanton Township, collecting that and then pumping it west to M22 up to this point. And that was $14,400,000. And then Arcadia Township collection and pumping that to Onekama. So, you know, so what we've, we've got cost for is everything here, pumping all the way to Onekama, then Onekama was all the way around and down, Bear Lake was collection and pumping over to here. Essentially a $40 million project. All right, so if we look at how many users we're proposing to have on the project at the onset or connections, we're looking at around, let's say, 1,500, 1,600 connections. If we were to take a $40 million project and have to finance that over 1,600 connections, there would be no way it would be feasible. There would be no way this could be that people would accept that. The cost would be way too high on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis, on an overall basis. So one of the things that we have to do with this project, and the biggest step here, is getting financing for the project. Okay? And financing can come in several forms. This is how we pay for the, <coughs> pay for the system. Um, what we need to do is we, we are proposing to finance this project through the United States Department of Agriculture and a group within that called Rural Development. It's a federal program. They've got offices in each state and many in each state. But it's federal dollars, essentially. Um, and we apply for those funds, complete an application, and we get some information back from them. And I'll talk about what that information is here in a second. But what I want to get at is that that application is pretty lengthy, as you can imagine, with any federal program, especially if you're going to ask for you know funding for $40 million, right? It's a big application. And you can only, you need one municipality applies for that fund, those funds. So we've got five that are part of this project. So we could feasibly, each, each municipality could apply all on their own. Okay, you'd have five different applications. You'd have five different funding packages that come forward. Um, you have, uh, well, five applications, which I said. Um, typically, it's about $10,000 to put one of those applications together. All right, if you do that five times, obviously that's around 50000 If we can collaborate all of those communities together into one application, we can't just say, hey, I'm, I'm such and such township, I'll take the lead on this, and we'll be the applicant. They don't allow that. You can only apply for funds that you'd use within your municipality. This is where the formation of the sewer authority comes in. And as, as John mentioned earlier, Eric Williams will be dialing in or we'll be calling him up here near the end, and he'll talk about the formation of the sewer authority and, and answer a bunch of questions that go along with that. But, so what we want to do or what we need to do is get all five communities together underneath one municipal heading, Three Lakes Collaborative Sewer Authority or Three Lakes Sewer Authority. But whatever we call it doesn't really matter, just as a sewer authority, so we can put forward one application for funding. Now there, there are benefits to that as well. Um, there are income levels that we get to blend everybody together, which really help with the funding package. Once you get to a certain income level, on an average with the community, it changes how much grant and loan is available to you. It increases the amount of grant that's available to us as the project. So instead of doing five at 50, we get to do one because of the project and the size, that's around $30,000 to put that application together. Talk about how, why that's important here in a minute. Um, once we make that application, we get back from rural development what's called a letter of conditions. So we do all the, we do all the paperwork, we make some submittals, there's some back and forth between 
the sewer authority, the engineer, and USDA, maybe they want more information, maybe they want it packaged a little different. There's always some back and forth with that. But what we want to get in the end of all of this is what's called the letter of conditions. And what that does is it lays out how much grant we get for the project, how much loan we have to we get for the project, what that percentage rate is, how many years that's financed over. Okay, so where we sit right now, I can tell you how much that project is going to cost. Talked about 40 million. I can't tell you how much it's going to cost you a month or a year. I don't know how much grant we're going to get. If we get 20 million dollars in grant, they give us a 50% grant. That's a whole different funding package and user rate schedule than if we get $5 million in grant or $30 million in grant. Big difference. And the percentage rate. Okay, right now percentage rates are at 2%. You know, if by the time the application goes in, if that changes at all, if it goes up or down, we, we get locked in at that whatever percent is, is uh, adopted at the time that's adjusted quarterly. That's another big factor. If it goes up to 3%, funding X amount of dollars at 3% over 40 years, that's a, that's a whole different funding package. So I know the big question is, how much is it going to cost me? But until we do some of this upfront legwork, I can't give you a good answer. I can, I can guess, but that's all it is. And you know how it is when you throw out a number at first, that's what everybody remembers, and we do not want to do that. So. What we do when we get that letter of conditions, though, then we know what we're up against, and we can then step back and say, okay, how many users do we have? How much, did we, how much do we have to finance at what percent? Okay, now we can step back and start figuring what we would expect it to be for the user costs per month, per year. Then we can come back to you and give you good information. Okay, so when we get the letter of conditions, we are not obligated to take that money. There's, we can walk away, so when we get those and we, we make those determinations, we come back and we say, this is about what it's going to be. If it, if it isn't advantageous, people don't want to do it, it's, it's too high, we can all walk away. And the only, the only money you've used spent was to get to that point, $30,000 for the, for the application, and I think Eric's is $10,000 for the formation of the sewer authority. So there's some upfront money to get to that point, but we can't give you good answers until we get there. If we get the letter of conditions and everybody says continue forward, then, then the board would say, okay, start the design, get the permits, have a bid, um, take bids, you know, begin construction, that kind of thing. Um, and you're still, even, at, even if you go through all of that, you're not obligated to take that money. So if we get bids and we say, holy cow, this is, why is this different than what we thought? We can still back out of it. We don't owe any money back to the tribe. Or, sorry, not the tribe, but to uh, rural development. Okay? Tribe will take it. Tribe will take it. <laughs> tribe will take it. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, raises, Gary. So if we, if, we, if we go through that process and we borrow the money and we, you know, we apply for it, we get it, we use it, how do, and we build the system, now the sewer authority has to have money coming in so they can repay that loan. Okay, just like a mortgage. You borrow money, you buy a house, but then you're paying on it on a monthly basis after that. This is the same thing. The sewer authority borrows money to build a sewer system, not a house, but then they've got to pay on that on a, sometimes twice a year, sometimes just once a year, depends on how it's set up, but they have to pay that money back. So the way we do that to pay back the loan is we set up what's called a special assessment, and that is assessment that's done on each property, and it can go on your, your taxes, so you don't have to pay a monthly bill for your special assessment. It would be once a year or twice a year, depending on how your taxes are done. If you have summer and winter taxes. But that goes on your taxes, and then that money comes in. So if we build this system and nobody connects, and we'll talk about that as well, but if nobody connects, we still have to pay that, that money back because that, that's been put in the ground and we've borrowed the money. It's the special assessment that allows us to make those bond payments and pay that off even if it doesn't get used, which won't be the case, but that's, that's why it's set up that way. The next thing, once somebody connects, once you connect to that sewer, then you would have a monthly user fee, monthly user rate, that would cover the operation and maintenance of the system, and it would cover the treatment for the sewage that you put into that line. So again, two, two items that would be part of that payback, the special assessment and the user fee. You'll have the special assessment if it's built regardless, 
whether you connect or not. Once you connect, then you'll have the user fee to cover those operation and maintenance charges and the uh, treatment charges. <laughs> okay. Next steps from where we sit right now. It seemed like there was a couple things I wanted to talk about that, uh, that I may have missed. Next steps. All right, from where we stand right now, we really we need to create that sewer authority so that we can begin applying for funds. As I mentioned, that, that application for the whole, all five communities is around $30,000. There's a grant out there that we can apply for to cover most of that, up to $25,000. That's called a planning grant. That's what we want to apply for first so that we can get grant funds to pay for the compilation and submitting the full application to rural development. Well, again, we have to have that sewer authority formed first. So we create the authority, we apply for the planning grant, that grant that I just mentioned that, that covers up to $25,000 of that cost. This one here. We complete the rural development application. We get our letter of conditions, as I mentioned, that outlines all of our financial obligations. We assess that letter of conditions and the potential user costs. And again, that's where I want you to remember, we, we're not obligated to take it. That's where we're going to say, OK, is this feasible or not? Do we continue any, any farther forward, or do we all walk away? So it's not a point where we apply, and then we have to just keep going. I mean, there, there, there are a lot of opportunities here to, to change direction. And I, and I don't want, but I say that because I don't want the townships to feel like, hey, <laughs> This bus has left the train, and you guys are just being dragged along. That's, that's not the case. I mean, there are opportunities to, to have input, nights like this. We'll have more information if we get, you know, if this all continues forward and we get the letter of conditions, we'll have more information and more opportunity at that point. Schedule. What are we looking at for schedule? So if we continue forward right now and we form the authority in April of 2017, we need to have that planning grant submitted in April as well. The reason for that is those funds are very competitive. As soon as they become available, there's people waiting in the weeds. As soon as that pops up, they apply for it. You get a ton of applications. It gets doled out, and it's gone for the year. So it only happens once a year, and they want our application in April. Now, you have a good chance of getting this. My personal feeling is you have a very good chance of getting the planning grant. Um, because of the people that are working on this project, um, trustees, uh, people that are involved with the township, people at AES, um, Debbie Stabenow's office, uh, Brandon was here from her, he's not here tonight, right now. Senator, Senator Stabenow, sorry. Senator Peters. And Senator Peters, yep. Um, they all have shown support for this project, they want to see it go forward. So when you start getting people like that involved, especially at the federal level and you're applying for federal grants and federal dollars, it really helps. So there's a lot of support for this project. So I have, a good, I have a good feeling about getting the planning grant. But again, it has to be applied for soon. I mean, we can move all this a year, but I'll talk about the caveat to doing that. I, municipal projects never move very fast. And the last thing that we want to do is try and force a project like this to move fast. I get the sense sometimes that we're a little bit that we're doing that with this the authority and then the planning grant. But again, as we go through the schedule, you'll see why. And I'll talk about why we want to do that, at least this upfront stuff, um, to get the grants uh, and the funding packages submitted. So we form the authority, submit for the planning grant, we do the uh, RD application submittal. So there's several months between April and October of 2017. As I mentioned, it's a big application. It takes a lot of time to put together. There's a lot of information that's compiled and submitted. It takes quite a while to get those pulled together. So October of 17, have that submitted. Receive the letter of conditions between October and January of 18. Again, that's that back and forth between the federal government and the applicant, getting every piece of information that they want submitted. Receive the letter of conditions in January. Begin design in April. But what I want you to note here is between January and April, we've got four, maybe five months, depending on where it falls in those, on those dates, where we come back and say, hey, here's what those user, we got the letter of conditions, here's what those user costs are likely to be. Let's have another discussion. 
do we continue forward? So that's what that time is in there, four or five months. <coughs> if, if everything's a go, we start design by April of 18. So basically a year from now, start design. Um, big project, takes a while to design that and get all the permits. So in December of 18, finalize the design, have a bid uh, advertisement period, open bids in March, start construction in May of 2019. So if we go forward as we sit right now, and we move forward with this schedule, we're two years and a month from where we sit right now. That's if we start this process. It's a long process. Now, that's starting construction. Now you're going to have eight months to a year of construction on a, on, a, on a system this size. So before anybody can even, by the time you can actually use the system, it's likely to be three years from now. But that's the process we got to follow. And that's why we need to get it in the queue and begin the discussions and begin that process. Because it does take a while. Now, I talked about trying to speed things up. One of the reasons that now is a good time to do this Rural development um, interest rates right now are at 2%. Six, seven years ago, they were at 7%, 6%, 8%, and people were happy with that percentage rate back then. Right now, at 2%, they were lower six months ago than they are now. They were either one and a half or one and three eighths. So they are starting to go up with the economy improving. Now, they, as I mentioned, they revisit that interest rate every quarter. So at the end of March, they will revisit it and they'll adjust it if they need to or leave it the same. I think they're probably going to leave it the same at this point, but they do that every quarter. So we could, you know, from now till if we put this off a year and we, we decide we want to think about it more, you know, who knows what the interest rate. They might be back down to in one and three eighths. They might be up at six. I, you know, who knows? But they do, they do get adjusted. Um, so waiting, waiting. Probably, especially with the interest rates doing what they're doing, isn't a real good idea. The other thing is, construction-wise, as you guys know, construction costs don't ever seem to go down. They seem to incrementally go up. So if we, the longer we wait, the more we pay for construction, right? Um, so right now, we're starting two years, you know, starting two years from now for construction. Um, one other piece of information that I wanted to mention about the the interest rate and the funding, the financing. Uh, when you get a loan from rural development, it's spread out over 40 years. There is no penalty for early payment. You could pay it off in day two, and there's no payment, no penalty. You could go out 40 years. But what the key thing is, is that 2%. When we get the letter of conditions, and in that letter it says you get <coughs> you know, X amount of dollars at whatever percent, we are locked in at that percentage rate. So, and we don't actually sign the loan closing documents until after we have bids and we're ready to start construction. At our, it's at our pre-construction meeting when we finally sign that document with Rural Development that says, thank you very much, we'll take it. Okay, so from letter of conditions to the date we would sign, you're looking at over a year. But when we get this letter of conditions, that locks us into our, our interest rate, our loan amount, our grant amount. So when we actually have the loan closing a year later, if the interest rates are, you know, we're at two, if the interest rates are three when we close, we stay at two. If their interest rates are less than two, then we get the lesser of, of those uh, interest rates. Okay. So when we get the letter of conditions, that is the highest that interest rate will be for us on the project. If they go down, we get the lesser of those. Brian, can we just do a quick test here? Are you on, Eric? I am. Um, cool. We're about ready for you, almost. Okay. Hey, Brian. Hey. Um, why, you know, one of the questions that comes up is why do we need to do the project or why, you know, why should we go forward? And John had talked earlier about water quality, the initiatives that have been going on, the watershed plans. This map is a map that shows Nasty County. And the S's that you see here, those are wells that have been tested and show elevated nitrate levels in the well, well water. This is from the DEQ website. So if you want to see this on the DEQ website, you can go to that. But what I want to do is I want to note that, you know, that the size of the S's 
you know, a bigger S is a higher concentration of nitrate. But what you can see here is you see our key township up there. There's a lot of S's, but there's a big one plastered in there. You can't really see it that well. But, so there's a lot of nitrate issues there. And you'll notice that it's typically around the lake shores where we have a lot of septic systems. And we typically, especially in this county, we have horrible geology for septic systems. Very coarse sand for the most part. And what you really want is some clay and silt so it slows that water down from going through the soil into your groundwater. The slower we can make it travel, the more the bacteria in the soil has a chance to treat it and clean it. If it doesn't have time, it goes right into the groundwater the way it was, the way it came out of your septic. So Arcadia Township, Bear Lake, or you know the village the township, and then also Nicholas Township. But again, just to try and show you, you know, some of the issues that we see, and you know, high nitrates in drinking water is one thing. Um, getting septic systems and the, the waste from that into your lake shore is another. And that's, you know, on the east. Right. Okay, I think with that. I'm done. We'll take questions here at the end. So, uh, you know, keep your questions and we'll fire away with those here at the end. And I'll turn it over to you, Eric. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Eric's going to talk to everybody about, as you mentioned, or as I mentioned earlier, about forming the sewer authority. Um, we talked about why we need it, but Eric's going to talk about the formation of that. So. Can everybody hear him in the way back? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Eric, take it over. Okay. Good evening, folks. Um, a sewer authority is something authorized by state statute in Michigan which allows constituent or member municipalities like cities, villages, and townships to form an authority that would operate, plan, design, finance um, a water or sewer project, sometimes a combined water or sewer project. <laughs> The whole purpose of the authority is to accomplish whatever tasks the municipalities give to the authority to do. So the authority doesn't have its own agenda unless and until municipalities form the authority with some project and then the authority acting through and for the municipalities comes up with a plan um, and then the way to design, construct, administer, and operate a water or sewer project. <clears throat> In this instance, the authority would be formed by the adoption of Articles of Incorporation, and those Articles of Incorporation have to be adopted in each member municipality that wants to be a part of it. So we have five municipalities that are proposed to enter and form the sewer authority, each would have one representative on the board that would be able to vote on the Sewer Authority Board. So the Sewer Authority Board would be formed with five voting members, one from each constituent or member municipality. And the authority can be adjusted over time to either add a member or drop a member, and then that voting representative would be added or dropped. So the board could change, but it would it should be a uh, one voting member on the board for each member municipality. <clears throat> Any question about that so far? Anybody waving their hands or looking puzzled? Nope, nope. Uh, oh, okay, we're good. let me go a little farther. Um, <clears throat> The authority will have the, uh, the powers that are given to it by statute and by the member municipalities. So there's no new governmental entity that's going to exert control over the municipalities or the citizens in the municipality. The authority is really formed by and through the municipalities to do what tasks the municipalities give to it. And then, of course, the, the specific design an operation than the authority would conduct, but each municipality has the right and the uh, authority or the power, I guess I should say, to approve a project in its municipality. 
So once the authority is formed and if there's a sewer or water project planned by the authority for one of the municipalities, that project can't go forward until there is the written approval by that particular member municipality. So the member municipality reserves the right or has the reserved right to stop a project and not allow it to go forward unless that municipality, meaning the township board or village council, approves it. So you never, you should never end up in a situation where the authority can somehow run amok and come up with a plan for a municipality and impose it on the municipality without that member municipality's assent or consent. This proposed set of articles will have a unanimous vote for the funding of the authority. Putting it more bluntly, it takes the unanimous vote of each member municipality's representative on the sewer authority board to develop a funding formula by which the municipalities have to pay the freight for the, and the cost of the authority. For the most part, the authorities are designed, and this authority would be designed, to fund itself. In other words, it has to uh, look to the um, costs in the operation of a water or sewer system so the ratepayers and the customers are paying the cost of the system. And the member municipalities are going to be interested in, through their one appointed representative, in keeping the cost of the authority down because if there are costs in operating the authority that aren't covered by the customers and the users, then the member municipalities are going to have to chip in. So that funding formula for chipping in to cover any costs uh, will require the unanimous vote of the elected representatives or appointed representatives from each municipality. So there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any uh, kind of runaway sewer authority board that wants to impose costs on the municipalities because the municipalities are going to make up that authority board. Just as an example, each township could put their township supervisor on the sewer authority board and the village council could put its village president on the sewer authority board. So you'd have that makeup on the sewer authority board that could hold down or restrain costs rather than have some other group of people take on the job of being the authority board members and impose costs on the member municipalities that they don't want. There, are some, there have been some questions posed um, either online or to me over the phone or maybe even at the other meeting that uh, ask about where there are, if, if there's a vote. And, and let me just take that through a couple steps. To form the authority requires a positive vote in each municipality that wants to adopt those articles of incorporation. So the voting to form the authority goes on at the township boards and the village councils. There is no vote of the population in each municipality to join the authority or form the authority. <clears throat> there's also a question then raised about whether there's a referendum on the authority. There is not. There's no right to have a referendum just on the question of forming the authority. Down the road, once the authority is formed, if there is a proposed contract between a municipality and the authority for operating a system or constructing a system, that contract is subject to a petition and referendum in the member municipality with which it's proposed. That's a long way from coming up, but that is a, a voting power limitation, if you will, on the contracting power between the municipality and the authority to set up a project or run a project um, in that municipality. Any questions about that so far? Keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, the articles of, in, <coughs> of, the, of incorporation have been sent to each of the member municipalities to discuss at their boards so people should be able to see them 
It's a little bit of legalese, there's no doubt about it, but the basic design of the articles <clears throat> is only to give the authority the power that the municipalities want to give it to go ahead and design, plan, and finance the um, water or sewer project. <clears throat> so if people want to have input to the authority, certainly they could go to the authority board meetings and talk to them, but probably more importantly, township and village residents will still have the opportunity to go to their own township or village board and say to their own elected representatives what those people want in their village or township for a sewer or water project. And we're only talking sewer here so far. But that, <clears throat> that contact is still, should still be there. And then the, the village or township will still have the authority to say yes or no to the sewer project in their community and yes or no to the bond financing. Um, the authority can't go do bond financing for one of the municipalities without the municipality's prior approval. That's about it for me, Brian, unless people have questions about something that I didn't touch on. Okay, we can, uh, we're at a point where we can open it up for questions on any of the topics, legal, engineering, that you've heard. So are there any questions? Yes. Um, and I apologize if you did mention it, but um, people who are in the village also pay a township tax. We get taxed twice. We would not have to pay an assessment twice, then would we? Through the village and through the township? <laughs> Um, no. I, if I heard the question right, I, I have a little trouble hearing the questions from out in the room, but if, if I heard the question right, it was something like, will a village resident somehow have to pay a double tax or a double special assessment or a double sewer fee for a sewer system run into the village because it's going through both the township and the village, and so the village resident could somehow be hit twice? Short answer to the question is no. Okay, thank you. Those special assessments set up per lot, whether yeah. you're in the village or not. I didn't think so, but the question, I needed question. more. Yes, sir. And the special assessments are only levied against those who would be part of the system. That's right. Only those that are in the district as defined when we do the funding. Okay. <laughs> and then if you're in that zone that's going to be in it, do you have to go into it or is it voluntary? I mean, do you have to connect? Yeah. Typically, the way rural development works is when we get federal funds for a system like this, they require connection within a certain period of time of construction. Um, a lot of times that's 18 months, can be two years, but they do require connection. Is there an assessment on an unbuildable piece of property that's in the zone? There would be a special assessment on that, absolutely. Even so, though they would never be able to build on it and hook into it, they'd still get a, an assessment and a fee on it? If it's a separate lot, a separate parcel number, they would be assessed a fee. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but the, there's two there's two components. There's the assessment for the construction, and then once you connect, then there's the monthly or the quarterly user fee that you would pay. Now, what I'm getting at is I've got a parcel of property on the lake that's unbuildable; nothing will ever be able to go on it. But it's still going to get assessed a fee. Is that because of size? It's because of size. Yeah. It's a cliff. It's, it's a clear, it's the section, okay. if you're familiar with the area, in front, right, right. across the street from the medical clinic, yep. there's, I own that 250 foot of waterfront, but nothing can ever be built on it, but there's going to be an assessment on that. Doesn't seem right, does it? No. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't mean I'm against the project, but. Uh, yeah, you know, I haven't run up against that situation. Um, let me do, let me do some digging and we can, okay. we'll. Just, just so we understand your primary building is on one side. I'm, I'm back on the south side of the highway, if you will, or east side, okay. and up and, on the hill, and then you, where I'm not going to be part of the project, probably. Okay. Um, but my waterfront section is. Totally yeah, disconnected. Which is unbuildable. Unbuildable, but has its own lot. parcel now. Part, no, has its own parcel. Has its own parcel. Okay. We'll have to, we'll take that as we'll a question of research. And I don't, and I'm probably not the only one in that. Yes, and I also have, um, I have five, <laughs> Unimproved lots on the North Shore, they're all swamp. They're unbuildable. I tried building them 
six or seven years ago, and I couldn't get any permits. I, I missed it. I'm sorry. He has five. He has five unbuildable lots, primarily because of that. Okay. Um, typically, typically, what we find with a sewer system for lots that are unbuildable because of wetlands. Um, and a lot of times they're unbuildable because you can't get a septic system in there? Yes. Now you don't need a septic system. They become buildable unless for some reason you're flipped or you don't have setbacks or something other than that. But that's, that's either the blessing or a caveat to where a lot of property around a lake that was once unbuildable, once you put in a sewer system, now buildable. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, get, you get one group of people who say, oh, we, don't, we never wanted people to build there. We want to keep it natural. And you get another group that says, man, it'd be nice to be able to build houses on that. But a lot of times those wetland areas become buildable once you have a sewer system. You don't need septic. Well, if they assess me, then I should try to build them, I guess. Or sell it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So I have a question, um, and I think I know the answer based on previous questions. But we have the lot that the house is on and a separate parcel that our garage is on. The garage does not have living quarters, does not have a toilet, does not have a restroom, mm -hmm. no water. Right. Two assessments? Two assessments, but you would only need to have one connection. Right. Yeah. Two assessments, only one connection. Yes, ma'am. If the lots are not allowed to be filled, what happens then? When you say filled, you mean a wetland lot? Um, typically, the way the DEQ works is they cannot take land. So if you apply for a building permit or apply to fill a wetland to build a house in a wetland, they will give you space to build a driveway in a house, not a yard, nothing else, typically. typically so what I'm getting at is typically they will not deny a wetland fill permit for a residence because they, they can't take property in that manner. And now, since we don't have to have a septic system that could potentially create pollution, it, it offers that opportunity to give those permits. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure what DEQ you're working with. <laughs> <laughs> I work with them quite, pretty hand in hand. I mean, I work with them on a daily basis. The big difference is the sewer system. <laughs> yeah, the big difference is the sewer system. If there wasn't a sewer system, then it'd be a whole different process. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. <laughs> Both of them are buildable. One's got a house on it, one's got a uh, mirror uh, contiguous. Right no, they're separated by a building. They're separated, they're separated by, by three points. Um, okay. I was thinking if it's together, you could always go to the organization and join. Yeah, yeah there's, there's there are situations, just like you said, if they're all contiguous, yeah. let's say you have four lots, right. four separate lots, but they're contiguous, instead of getting four separate assessments, you can connect those. However, um, the way assessments go on vacant property, um, well, that would be if it's its own lot. So, yes. In Pleasanton Township, we have a we have a area all, almost all of Lakeside Drive that most of the owners own three lots because it's it's two subdivisions, so they can't be put together, and then a means and bounds description in the back. So somebody's house may, may even set across the line, but they can't be combined. I mean, not for taxing purposes. So if you're gonna, I mean, if you're gonna set an assessment for each one, it appears to be one lot with a house and maybe a, a, a building, but they're still gonna get three tax bills. I I can see where that would be an issue. Do they get they get tax bills right now for each lot? They do, they do, mm -hmm. but some of them, I mean, it's just because they can't be combined because they're in two subdivisions and a meets and bounds description. So there's no possible way to this, to combine them. So I can see where that would be. That you know, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yes. I just wanted some clarification. You on the the uh, authority itself is made up of representatives from each of the governing governing units. They are the only ones who finally vote on what gets done, but they can't approve anything unless their government board or village council 
first approves it? Is that the way the... So your, your question is that the sewer authority, say at a sewer authority board meeting, can that individual representing Township X make a decision for the Township as a whole without prior approval of the Township as a whole? Is that what you're, kind of what you're asking? Right. Does it have to be approved at the board Township board level before that individual can take it to the sewer board okay. and vote in inspection? Did you, did you hear some of that, Eric? I, I could only hear something about what happens at the township board, what happens at the uh, authority board. So yeah. I, I didn't hear what the the beginning part of the question was. What was the underlying issue? What, is, what are they worried about? The question is, can an individual that's on the sewer authority board make a decision that hasn't already been made by the township board? So in other words, do they have to have a decision at the township board and then that individual takes it to the sewer authority board and votes in the manner in which the township board said they shall? Uh, short answer is no, it just doesn't work that way. I mean, it might seem like it should, but it, it, it just isn't how it works. Uh, for example, the, uh, the authority board can't impose or create a sewer district or a, a sewer project for a municipality and make the municipality do it. So if, the, if somebody on the authority board votes to come up with plans, votes, votes to explore financing, votes to uh, show the plans to the township or the village, they don't, they don't have to go to the village or township board and get approval first to vote on planning, design, or anything else at the sewer authority board. But the board itself, that is the authority board, can't make the, the village or township board agree to anything. The village or township still has to agree to that proposal for that particular um, village or township. So it, it really isn't a function of the um, appointed representative somehow having to be told how to vote before they vote. That isn't, it doesn't work quite that way at all. Um, however, <clears throat> the way this one is designed, the each individual municipality, meaning their board, can remove their appointed representative from the sewer authority board at any time without any reason. So if there was an issue or problem with, say, one particular township that appoints their supervisor to go be on the sewer authority board, and then their supervisor seems to be voting differently than what the uh, township hoped, uh, the township board can remove the supervisor as their elected or excuse me appointed representative on the sewer authority board so they always have that remaining control over particular votes but the voting is actually done by that person at the sewer authority board and they can vote however they think they're supposed to now, did i answer the question for the person or have i created more questions The township boards have ultimate authority, but yet their representative can vote a different way. And if their representative votes in a way that they did not tell them or suggest they vote, the, you're saying the sewer authority cannot impose anything on a township. I guess I'm unclear as to how that chain of command is going to work. Well, I, I can try it again. There is no chain of command. It, it's not like the township board tells its appointed representative what that person has to say over at the sewer authority board. It, it just doesn't do that. But the sewer authority board doesn't have any power to make a township or uh, village accept a project or finance a project, project in that township or village. The city, the village or the township board still gets to approve it. Okay. So, okay. I'm just going to take Carolyn for an example. I'm a member of the board. So we're going to be talking about all this stuff, right? All five of us are going to be talking at our board meeting about whatever it is on the table with the sewer, right? We're going to be hands-on. And I... I highly doubt that our representative, when we make that decision, 
is going to go to the sewer authority meeting and do something completely opposite. I have 100% faith in our board and our representative. Yes, there probably is a chance that they could, but I, I, you, we've got the wrong people in office if they actually do that. I think. Uh, Brian, let me try and, I, I only got pieces of the question, but let me try and put it in the context of, a, of an issue to, to just kind of walk through it. Let's say um, in a particular municipality, the residents and the township board or village council have various ideas about what, part, what should be the sewer district, who should be in it, who should be out. Um, they give whatever their ideas are for that particular township to the authority to say yes we want a sewer district and we want it to be like this and let's say for whatever reason the authority comes up with a plan and brings it back to the village or township and says we think the district ought to be here do you approve that and do you want us to to build according to that and plan and design according to that in the process if the village or township representative at the sewer authority board says yeah I like the plan that or I don't like the plan it really doesn't do anything to um, make it better or worse because the village or township board still has the approval ultimately of that district or the actual project to be constructed and where it's supposed to be so they don't they don't the township or village township board and village council never lose that authority or power regardless of how their one person goes and votes at the authority board answer your question yes I oh, thank you okay. yes sir from what i understand uh the uh, budget proposal uh, submitted in the last couple of days by the Trump administration <coughs> eliminates all funding for r USDA rural development uh, loans and grants. That's what I read. I, I had not heard that. Yeah. I know he's he's changed a lot of things, so I guess I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if that if that got adjusted. But I had not heard that. That's what I read twice. And Brian, on, on that note, with regard to the funding, the whole purpose, not whole purpose, but one of the purposes behind forming the authority is so that the authority could seek the funding, whether it's from USDA or any other entity, and grants for the whole project as one, rather than each member municipality trying to design and fund and finance its own. So, you know, USDA has been one, one or the primary financing opportunity um, for these projects, but that, that could change. And we won't really even know that for sure until we get the authority formed and we try for it. Yes. Uh, I don't live here, it's not my primary residence, but I'm in the district. So what's the best way to keep up to date on the progress of the project? Is there like a central place repository. The only way I knew about this is because of communication from the uh, Bear Lake Property Owners Association. Brian, is there a website or is it everybody should go through AES? Yeah, every, on, if you got one of these sheets um, on the front, it doesn't, the, the problem with this is it doesn't give you a website to go to. So we haven't created one yet. Okay. I would imagine that may be part in the process if all of this decides to go forward. Um, but if you want to give input, uh, ask questions, you will get a response back to your questions. I spent a lot of time just answering questions, getting it to AES, then they give it back to the person that sent them. But in the middle of the page, you'll see number one, two, and three. There's phone numbers, there's emails, um, and fax number to get some questions into the board. But as far as a website right now to go to to stay up to speed, that hasn't been created yet. It has been discussed amongst the group, but it hasn't been created.
Brad, you mentioned earlier that at this time only um, lots in the proposed districts are considered for requiring connection and anything along the route from Arcadia or Bear Lake or Mecca <coughs> to Manistee was not being considered. Why not? Um, most of it was because the immediate issue of trying to serve the lakes um, and capacity at the plant. Um, others can connect along that route, but what we end up doing is, I mean, if we have these as the, the districts, and all of a sudden we've got a lot here that's part of the special assessment, a lot down here that's part of the special assessment district, a lot through here. Instead of doing it, the three, and then piecemealing it throughout, these people that want to connect along this route that's not in those districts would still be have to pay the special assessment fees, but they wouldn't be part of the special assessment district. So there's still opportunity to connect. You can still connect along those routes. It's just you're not part of that initial sewer district. It's actually not a bad position. Okay. And I, and I guess I asked just because uh, the question 10 in this packet, the wording is interesting in that it says, usually the funding agency, in this case USDRD, USDARD, requires connection by users within a certain distance of the sewer line. And that sewer line is going to run. Yeah, different if, different if you're in the district or not. Because if you are in the district, you're part of that whole funding application. I've got you or your lot tagged with the number. You're part of that whole application. If you're not, that's a whole different story. Okay. Other questions? Yes? I'm thinking about a neighbor a friend of ours who is very elderly and has has limited financial needs. I don't know that she's even going to be able to afford an assessment or the department to come up. What happens to people in that situation? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. You know, the prop. Brian, we, we can. The she, she asked that people can't afford it. There's somebody in a situation financially they cannot afford to yeah. pay an assessment. What happens in that situation? Um, I'll, I'll do some digging to find out what has been done in the past. I know this, the property would still be assessed, but is it covered through some? Could it be covered through some program or something? I, I don't know the answer to that right now. Good question. Yeah. Any other ones? No other questions? Well, the next oh, steps. Well. Yes. Brian, are you related to John Phillip? I'm not. I wish I was. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> good, good question. Great question. How long um, will the um, TV thing be available on YouTube? When, when will it be available? When and how will it be available a year from now? Forever, probably. For, okay. The, the, this morning session, I understand this morning session is already on. Yeah. It's already on. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. Thank uh, you. Julie, can you tell us what your website address is so people have that? <coughs> <laughs> I think it's Bear Lake TWP. can't remember if it's dot com or dot org, and my phone is in use, or I would be able to I think it's dot org. Dot org? I think so. Yep, and it's on the upper right hand side under projects in the drop down. Sure. Okay, because I've had people ask. Yep, yep. <coughs> Some of the next steps, just to kind of wind this up, is they're continuing with the formation of the authority with the very the five different units of government. And they're also looking at, as Brian mentioned, putting in a planning grant in April that would then help get the full application ready for submission uh, if it proceeds to that point. We are encouraging everybody that has questions, if you think of a question that tomorrow, for example, uh, you can contact the Alliance for Economic Success. AES out of Manistee is the kind of the organization that's kind of pulling all this together. Uh, and there will be periodic news updates and announcements. 
and they're anticipating having another series of these meetings in the summer because you're going to have seasonal people that come back that will be impacted and in, at that time there'll probably be some additional information to share with everybody so they'll have these community conversations again probably in the summer and it will probably be sometime in July when most of the people are here so uh, but you'll, you'll get advanced <coughs> announcements we've got we've collected questions from this morning and this evening and uh, as we get the questions we'll keep adding them to the frequently asked questions so they'll we'll keep populating that document so with that said if there's no yes you have a just a correction on the Bear Lake, it's bearlakepwp.com. Dot com. Dot com, not dot org. Thank you. Thank you. So if there's no further questions. I'll be here until everybody's gone, so yeah. if you want to come up and talk afterwards. Enjoy the rest of St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> We're done, Eric. <laughs> okay, thanks, folks. Have a good night. Thanks, you too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.